Welcome. I'm Sebastian Mafud, and you're listening to WCAT Radio, the on-air wing of En Route Books and Media, bringing you the dulcet sounds of Catholic wisdom. Hello, this is Kahame Mandel Peter. You are listening to WCAT Radio. Today, I am very, very glad that I would wish to present some of the very, very sensitive concepts towards development of a human being, development of the country, development of uh, even the world. There are things which we really need them. There are things which all of us, we should are there to, despite of the fact that the world is really moving today towards promoting and uh, strategizing, talking, and even working day and night towards development. But from the very simple understanding of the practical experience, I myself, I have been experiencing and I have gone through in uh, different times and with the different and from different people. There are things I think today I should present them before you. Um, it's, it's very common for every person to talk about development. And it's very, very common for all of us to say we need development. Be it spiritual development, be it social, economical, political, uh, development in infrastructures, and uh, even other kind of uh, reforms. Today, the world, since 2015, uh, as the United Nations inaugurated the program as it goes by the name of Global Goals, or the 23rd Agendas, or we call them the Sustainable Development Goals. It has been since then. There are all different people, different organizations, with the different programs towards coming up with what we are talking of sustainable development. We understand that sustainable development needs sustainable process, sustainable programs, and sustainable targets. Out of all the 17 global goals, there are all different global goals they're in. Some they're very key and some they are there okay to support the other. But you can see each one has its own contribution toward the development of the world. Here we are. Why do I say there are some of the things which we really need all of us to are there if we really need to go with the word or the term development? But uh, the world has so many good people, but it still, trust me or not, the world has people whom they act in very strange ways. Now, how can we be sure whoever says that we need development is really there for development? These are some of the things. As for myself, as for my opinion and perceptions, that every person who speaks of the development first should speak from his or her heart. It should be coming as a conviction within one's heart and mind. It should be connected with the soul of that person. As in for whatever I'm doing, an act or a conduct or an, an omission, it should be for what I have said. But if there is no connection between the soul and the mind, trust me, even the action will fall specifically the, 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 the mind of that person or the mind of that heart. So there are so many people today, they will come out here with so many propagandas, with so many programs, with so many words, simply because they want you to do what they want to do for their personal interest and stuff. They will just confuse you, they will do whatever they want to do, simply because they are doing things from their uh, mouth and not from their heart. How would you understand this? 
These are the people when things are happening with personal motive or individualism, whenever anything goes astray or whenever something different is presented as a form of challenge to them, they are ever, ever negative. But whoever is there to push development, whenever a positive ch challenge comes in, this person will be ready to adapt it. But otherwise, trust me or not, it's more of someone's mouth than one's heart. One of the great men said, if you are doing anything, do it in the heart of the man. As even when you are gone, it will remain in their hearts. But if you do something for the sake of fashion and fashion or whatever, it will just go as you also go. That's very one. Second one, people who are really supposed to be there for de development, they are not supposed to work basing on some specific ideologies without considering the general situations of the general community. Let's take an example. You are in a community where there are some people who are in power. And because they are in power, they only believe what they are saying is very right without accepting the challenges from the opposite side, without thinking what the opposite side is saying. Being at the opposite side does not mean an opposition. It is something who is giving you a second thought out of what you have. But the people whom are divided or are dividing people because of ideologies, even if they tell you we are for development, trust me, that's not development. Development must be perceived from an angle where everyone is included, not only in the act, it should be from the planning and all the same. It should be perceived as something which is going to have the general impact. Not something is done simply because I have to do and be seen I have done for the changes. It should be having sustainable processes, sustainable progress, of which involvement of the general community is very, very potential. It's very, very, very important in that. But now we are witnessing in our communities today, in the world, that there are very few people whom they decide because, okay, they decide for the community, they are trying to do very good things, but for those good things to last longer, to have that support of the majority and everything, at a time we must find a way of working with every person. But if you are just arrogant, you are just mad to people, and you are just pushing away, you push their thoughts, only trying to penetrate yours in their heart and mind, they will never last longer because they are not in their heart. You have not involved them. And at the end of the day, you feel yourself as a very special, very important, and it's only your thought are seen to be the best. In the developmental processes, we really need to include everyone. And including everyone does not mean you must do that what everyone needs, but, to, but you must make sure that whatever you're doing has at least has a second thought from others and not to be soft yourself, soft your power and trying to show off to people that who you are. That won't be development. This is happening in the, the communities, in the families, in the schools, in the learning institutions like colleges. It happens in the religious institutions, in the churches, in the government, and even everywhere. There are people of such kind, and they think they're the best. That's another thing. But still, we have the thing of uh, observing uh, 
ethical principles. One of the things I am wondering as in why the world has failed to set the moral standards of the world and include them in the global goals. It's something I can't understand. It's where I find still the diversity in our perceptions and the diversity in what we are trying to live from the different places we are in this world has still a very, very serious challenge towards the fact that the world needs standard moral principles of which they were supposed to be honored and pushed as the global goals and the sustainable processes are undertaken in the world. Why am I saying the role of uh, the ethical principles? We as human beings, as for whatever we are all doing today, must have a connection or a feeling as in uh, whatever I am doing must have an effect to myself, to my neighbor, to the environment, and to even those who are yet to exist, and probably even to those who have gone already, as in, uh, if we do not consider some of these small, small things, and some they say, who is my neighbor then? If I am doing something and it does not affect you or it does not have any negative effects towards your life, then why shouldn't I do it? I feel like this is very serious. I am not saying this as uh, to crush or to criticize negatively what the world has set as global goals, but I am trying to question the point of moral and ethical principles where the world can rely as human beings. We as human beings globally, at a point we become all lovers equal, then why not to have equal moral principles? The standard has to be set. It's only through that the world will be safe. It's only through that the consideration of the environment, the consideration of the life, the consideration of the weak people, and the consideration of the funds and all the programs which are undertaken by the by different institutions, entities, and individuals in the world will take its core root. Otherwise, at a point we'll find ourselves moving in a wrong direction, moving in a wrong way. Um, why today the world is really suffering? We are all really suffering with so many social challenges, with so many crimes, simply because people have lost their moral principles, their ethical principles. This is a question. Okay, there are some people who feel it's their right and it's okay for them to choose and do whatever they feel, whatever they think. The question comes in, where and uh, why do we think that a human person needs a free move of every and single act one wishes to do? Example, when we say people are free to have sexual intercourse, as in... Uh, of the same sex, do you really think these people at the end of the day, will they really remain psychologically okay and morally okay? Because in the very first place you see what they are doing from the word go, it has not been that way. But it seems there are some people who are very good, uh, very big they're having good financial stabilities. Now, what they want to do is to do whatever they feel, whatever they want, as long as it does not affect any person. That's being relativist, of which it's very, very bad. At a time, we have to consider there are things not every person should do and no one even should do. Let's take an example. Why, if someone tries to kill oneself, 
we arrest this person for attempting to murder. While these people, it's just similar, they would just say, it's my body. Who else is affected with this? But this is a criminal offense in most of the states. Why should someone kill oneself? It's, it's illegal. Then we are saying today it's free for people to do whatever they want as long as it does not harm any other person. That's not a ground of prohibiting these things. But the nature, the model nature, that the world has been created in its foundations. We are human beings. We are human beings. We are men and women who are created for the special purpose of promoting the generation. How do we promote the generation through same sex? How do we get stable community with the practice of this, I call them awkward and strange acts? I know this has come from the states which are very, very, very developed. As for them, they feel like, okay, now we have money. We do not need to have this thing like, oh, God, God has told us what. They question and they say, where is God? Where is that God? Who is that God who is, uh, like, prohibiting us or controlling us? Why are you saying that God is the one who is helping us? Because they've attained the highest levels of development. They can support them with a lot of things, medical support, financial infrastructures and everything. At the end of the day, they have lost that sense of being human as in uh, they can do these things in a way. They consider some of the things which are not there to be, like you are supposed to be forced by someone. But only as regulations are there moral regulations. So the world today has really um, moved a very, very far step toward failing to have the moral principles, the worldwide uh, governing moral principles. So if we do not have these at the end of the day, even the development we are going to have, trust me, won't be having those grounds for future success because people are morally de uh, like uh, um, decomposed already they are not really the same so we really need to have standards where the world will be safe the world will adore moral and ethical principles despite of the legal systems to be there but still it must come from the heart of a person that uh, this is simply for the sake of psychological and other social uh, side effect. If there are people whom they are negatively affected with their hormones, then it was the task of the scientists now to come up with the solution of saying these people they are supposed to be supported by giving either medication or being given psychological support so that they can be transformed into the normal way of life and not supporting homosexuality. And some, they do not have even the issue of hormonal imbalance or hormonal question, but it's because they feel, I am free to do this and I want to show the world. And the world is supporting that because we do not have the standards, which is very, very wrong and which is very, very serious. So... For me, I will add it today, especially for those who are still holding their faith, being, be it Christians, be it Muslims, be it uh, Jew, Jewish, or whoever, even if it's a pagan or whatever. But the thing is, we need still to hold into the moral principles where all of us, we can still have sustainable move for many years for many communities to come. Now, one of the very, very factor as an, uh, for development, be it in the church, be it in the community, family, and to any level, is that the community today is supposed to make sure that the political processes undertaken there 
involve people without separation or without disregard of one another. Let me question. If the world today is having, like in one country, 20 political parties, as in the name of democracy, now, if all of us we are there to move for development, then why should we so much divide it? Why don't we have a structural system where at least we may have two political parties or three political parties, and all of them must stand into a very similar, similar policies, similar structures, and similar constitutional programs, constitutional directives, instead of everyone coming with his or her own perceptions, perspectives, and plans. Where do you think you are taking uh, these people? Because if everyone has his or her own small group, then how will you reach at the same destination? At the end of the day, you find everyone comes up, says whatever, we are not moving, we are not doing... As in, in every state, as in every particular country, it's very important to look at what are the political processes and what are the political strategies and structures. And they must be governed with the Constitution. And the Constitution must be very, very people-centered uh, uh, document. Otherwise, if it's only for some political people, it will really be having no very serious uh, effect towards the changes or the positive changes. So for any development to be sustainable, the community is required to ensure that we are having clean and safe political processes, clean and safe political system, and not the political system which is full of propagandas, full of uh, uh, divisions, full of uh, negative attacks, and full of all malices. We are witnessing today in the world where people are really fighting, people are really against each other, people are really killed, assassinated, and even there are some of the good things which were to be done by some other people, but because they are not doing the same politics, or they are not even the politics, you find they, these people are attacked. You might find in some places, in some places in the world, you find is a country in a, in, in, a, in a country. Maybe previous uh, there were private institutions which were offering very good services to the community in with the very cheap costs, all even for free, be it education, health, and the other social services. But later, you find in the very same state, the government which was having the responsibility of providing these social services is now standing against the same private sectors which are supporting the role of the government toward provision of better social services. Then you start questioning, what politics is this? If the political system is not supporting the developmental process of the private sectors of individuals, then there a very serious question comes in. If this political party, is it really there for the development or it is simply there for the sake of its own benefits, for the sake of its own gain? Because as in for a state, it is like the father of everyone. It is there to uh, defend the interest of everyone in the community. As long as these people, they are not acting contrary to uh, the laws. And even if they are acting contrary to the laws, these people will have to be directed again as the laws start. But if the government again, the political parties are start working against or contrary to the private sector or to the people who are not working under their same ideologies, there, there is a problem. Or rather, it can even be, the, these private sectors, they can even be doing, promoting the same police. But you find there is a kind of struggle of finding who is superior, 
who is the giant who is bigger than the other is it this private sector or the government so when you see a father starts fighting uh, or weighing oneself with the, with, with the children or those whom may be supposed to take care of then there you question the credibility of this the ethical principles of this and even the real intention of that political system towards promoting social services in the community. So every political party, especially in the developing countries, must really, really understand that we are there to support each other. Because if these people, uh, the private sectors, maybe they withdraw or individuals withdraw, they start doing their own things or they start moving to do their things in, the, uh, in other places. It's the common person, it's the common people, these people in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the lowest level. They're the ones who will suffer, especially the poorest people, because they're the ones who can't afford expensive services. So it's really, really very important for every political party to adhere to the principles of union, unity, and supporting the programs of those who are not working as in the same way they are working. But as long as the aim is one to promote social services, development and the, and the livelihood of the state, it's really, really very important for all of us to work together. Now, another thing is for every development to be sustainable in every community, the role of the youth and a woman must be counted as something of a serious nature. Because these two groups are the biggest group in the community. Now, if you support women, if you support uh, youth, that means you will have created a very long-lasting economic, economic stability in that community since a person from the very young age will be able to move and do things as an independent person. But if these people, they are very weak economically from this young age, that's why you'll find states have many criminals, states have so many uh, social crimes, states have so many uh, peace issues, uh, have a lot of uh, climatic actions which are need to be done because people, they have got no jobs, people have got no employment, people have got no economic stability, the health of these people will be very bad. So the matter comes in is we are really, really supposed to make sure youth and women are empowered. Let us empower them with the skills. Let us empower them with um, means to strategize their business plans, to strategize their financial saving, to strategize on what are the basic pillars of human life that if we invest in this we'll be safe as in we need to have good living houses where you can be having a you can be having peace if you're not good having if you're not if you're not having a good living environment trust me it's really not easy for you to be having good thoughts you're, you're not going to be having good health you're not going to be having good process of uh, toward development because how do you find time to rest to plan and from where that's very important let us try to help these people to know making and supervising our managing their business plans the government today has not enough uh, uh, chances to employ people but still we can find a way for these people to employ themselves. Even young people themselves, they should also start looking. I'm about to graduate. I have one year. Why don't I start looking for a job? Because I'm pretty sure uh, when I'll finish my study, I need a work. So you better start looking for the job as early as possible. At least one year before. Start looking for good people, connections, and seeing where good are you at so that when you finish you simply jump into that and not to wait until you finish the studies it's when you start now st struggling from the scratch that's very important and when we stabilize with women trust me the families will be very stable because these are the people who take care of the families they're the ones who hold 70 percent of home affairs they're the ones who knows better about what's happening there they're the ones who knows what to be cooked 
uh, what to be eaten in the house, how the children should be, and all that. They are the ones who know much better about the family than we men. So if women are stabilized, if women are given abilities, if women are given uh, abilities to do what they're supposed to do, it will be very easy for the communities to be safe. That means their health will be good because the balance that will be well cared and catered in the families. Children will be given means to go to school, then we shall be having uh, quality education, poverty will be ended. You can see everything will be really, really very good. So trust me, we are in the world today where there are some groups which are really supposed to be supported, especially in uh, the rural areas, especially in developing countries like Tanzania and East Africa and the other countries in Africa, the women, young people and women in the villages, they are supposed to be really supported. You find there are some programs going on worldwide, but they are not aware about them and no one is ready to, they are like, why should we go there? Even if they go there, they just go there and uh, give them some minimal uh, content about what is really, really supposed to be given to them. So the world should see today the importance of creating these grounds and some of the very, very basic principles whereby the world will stand into them and especially the, the developing countries. I myself, as for my country, Tanzania, I would like to advise people in the government and even those of policy makers, lawmakers, implementers, law enforcers and everyone that we should find a way to make sure the communities, especially in the villages, are safe. The communities, especially in rural areas, are supported with the basic skills, knowledges on how to stand for their sustainable processes, sustainable development. I ever say, in every community, in every family, in every state and at every angle, if a state has to be sovereign, if a state needs sovereign, it must start with the economic sovereign of each individual. And when each individual has economic sovereign, trust me, the state will have that sovereign. Hence, it will be respected worldwide. It will be respected everywhere. Otherwise, the dignity the respect and the status of that state will be at the minimum unless for the God-fearing they're the ones who can value everyone. What you have is what makes you who you are before others. Thank you. God bless you. Hello, Pendos Kizajiwetu, Radio Yetu, WCAT. Mimi ni mtangazaji wako, Kahama Emmanuel Peter, kutoka Tanzania. Basi, leo nitapenda tushirikishane juu ya misingi mbalimbali ambayo inaweza ikasaidia maendeleo katika jamii inaweza kusaidia maendeleo kuanzia leo familia jamii hata kufikia leo ya taifa pamoja na dunia nzima leo hii dunia inapo endelea na utekelezaji wa malengo endelevu ya umoja mataifa ambayo yaliwekwa mwaka 2015 na ambayo yataendelea mpaka mwaka wa 2030 basi tunashuhudia mikakati na shughuli mbalimbali ambazo zimekuwa zikifanyika zikitekelezwa na zikiendelea katika sehemu mbalimbali za dunia hii ikiwemo pia katika miji kama hii ya Tabora Tanzania ambayo basi ni moja ya miji iliyobahatika kuwepo katika mpango wa maendeleo ya baadhi ya majiji au miji katika bara la Afrika na dunia nzima ikiwemo pamoja na miji pia kama ya Kisumu basi na sehemu nyingine za dunia hii lakini katika mambo yote ambayo yanafanyika katika dunia hii ili tuweze kuwa na maendeleo endelevu lazima tuwe na mipango ambayo ni endelevu lakini pia tuwe na na, na, na strategies tuwe na, 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 na mbinu ambazo pia ni endelevu katika utekelezaji wa mambo hayo lakini kuwepo kwa mipango, kuwepo kwa malengo na kuwepo kwa kila kitu ambacho kinaweza kuleta maendeleo endelevu haimaanishi tayari tumekuwa na malengo tumekuwa na maendeleo endelevu. Kuna vitu ambavyo kwa mtazamo wangu mimi nafikiri vingekuwa ni vitu vya kupewa kipaumbele kikubwa sana ili 
kweli maendeleo yaweze kuwa endelevu. Hivyo basi kwa mtazamo wangu mimi leo ningependa nikushirikishe baadhi ya vitu ambavyo nafikiri na ninaamini kwamba kwa uzoefu wangu na na uzoefu na uzoefu ambao nimepitia katika shughuli mbalimbali ninaona kwamba haya ni baadhi ya mambo ya msingi sana yakifanyika au ya lazima yafanyike ili kuhakikisha tunakuwa na maendeleo endelevu kuanzia level zote kwanza kabisa lazima kuwe na uzingatiwaji wa maadili lazima kuwe na misingi ya maadili katika jamii jamii yoyote isipokuwa na maadili basi kile kinachofanyika hakitakuwa na uhusiano kati ya nafsi ya anayekifikiria anayekifanya na hata madhara yake na matokeo yake hayatakuwa na ule ule msukumo wa ndani wa mtu na hata kama ukiwa ni msukumo wa ndani wa mtu basi utakuwa ni kwa sababu binafsi lakini sio kwa sababu ya misingi ambayo imewekwa ime na jamii kama jamii najaribu kujiuliza na pengine napata shida <coughs> ni kwa nini uh, umoja wa mataifa ulipokuwa unaandaa malengo endelevu ya umoja wa mataifa au uh, malengo endelevu ya dunia haukuweka kati ya malengo hayo wala lengo moja ambalo kimsingi kazi yake kubwa ni kuhimiza au kusimamia maadili kwa sababu bila maadili kutakuwa na rushwa kutakuwa na dhuruma kutakuwa na mambo kila namna ambayo yangeweza kwa namna yoyote ile haiwezi kusaidia maendeleo endelevu kwa hiyo ili jamii iweze kuendelea lazima kuwe na misingi ambayo inamfanya mwanadamu awe na hofu awe na mashaka hajiulize je hiki ninachokifanya kweli kimaadili ni sawa kwa mfano ninajiuliza na ninashangaa kwa nini dunia leo inaruhusu kuwepo kwa baadhi ya vitendo ambavyo kimaadili unakuwa na uhakika kabisa anayekifanya lazima atakuwa na madhara fulani ya kisaikolojia ambayo yanaweza kumwathiri pia katika utendaji wake katika kufikiri kwake na hata uzalishaji ukuaji wa jamii na ukuaji wa kimsingi ambao ni endelevu hauwezi kwa kwa mfano mapenzi ya jinsi ya moja je haya yana support vipi ukuaji wa vizazi na kizazi katika dunia yana support vipi kuwepo kwa uimara na uthabiti katika jamii kwa sababu mtu yeyote anayejihusisha na mahusiano ya namna hii lazima kwa namna yoyote ile atakuwa kinyume na mpango wa asili wa, mwana, wa mwanadamu mpango wa asili ambao Mungu aliuweka kwa ajili ya maisha ya mwanadamu kwa hiyo najaribu kujiuliza je huoni kama hawa watu wanajaribu kuiharibu dunia kwa kutumia nguvu zao za kifedha nguvu zao za kimamlaka basi na ushawishi wao mkubwa katika ulimwengu huu. Kwa kwa mataifa ambayo bado yanaendelea ni msingi sana kwa vitu kama hivi kuzingatia kwa sababu ili watu wetu waweze kufanya uzalishaji ambao ni endelevu waweze kufanya shughuli ambazo ni endelevu wanalazimika na ni lazima sana kwanza wawe stable kimaadili ili familia zao zikuwe salama jiulize kwa mfano katika utamaduni wetu kama wa Afrika unamuona kaka yako ana mahusiano na mtu mwingine kwa vivyote vile unajiuliza na unasema hiki kitu hiki kitu kinawezekanaje kufanyika kwa sababu kimsingi huwezi kufanya baadhi ya vitendo ambavyo hata wanyama hawavifanyi alafu kabakia kuwa salama hili swala ni kinyume kabisa na mpango wa Mungu ni kinyume kabisa na tamaduni zetu na ni kinyume pia na sheria zetu kwa taifa kama Tanzania sheria sisi mfumo wetu wa sheria uh, kwa neno la kitaalamu tunatumia tuna mifumo miwili dualist na monolist sisi mfumo wetu ni wa dualist kwamba sheria zetu zinachangamana na sheria za kimataifa baada ya kuwa zimeidhinishwa hapa ndani lakini sheria za nje haziwezi kuwa na nguvu kubwa kuliko sheria za ndani katika swali lolote linalotokea basi sheria za ndani huwa zinasimama kwa sababu ndizo zinazotumika kufanyia maamuzi mahakamani 
kwa sheria za nje zinakuwepo kwa ajili ya kutusaidia tu baadhi ya mambo lakini sio msingi mkuu wa maamuzi ya kimahakama katika taifa letu kwa ni swala ambalo la msingi sana ninajaribu kujiuliza kwa mfano haya mataifa makubwa yaliyoendelea yanaposema kwamba acheni watu wawe huru kufanya yaro ninayojisikia wao kwa sababu kwa kadiri ya mtu anachokifanya ana kitu fulani ambacho anapenda yeye kukifanya kama wewe hakikuumizi basi wewe una haja ya kukiuliza nikajiuliza swali moja katika mataifa haya haya wana sheria ambazo mtu akijaribu kujinyonga wanamfungulia kesi ya jaribio la kuua ye mwenyewe itaka kufanya lakini mbona wafanye hivyo lakini katika mataifa yetu haya wanalazimisha sisi tufanye matendo ambayo ni kinyume kabisa na misingi na maadili ya taifa letu ni kinyume kabisa na misingi na mwelekeo wa maisha ya mwanadamu kutoka kuumbu kwa ulimwengu lakini kwa sababu ya mipango yao ambayo mimi ninaamini kabisa wana lengo ya kuharibu kizazi ili regeneration inayokuja iweze kufaidi baadhi ya vitu na hii generation iliyopo iweze kuvunjika vunjika na kubomoka bomoka ndio maana wanapigana na kutumia nguvu kubwa sana na uwezo walionao ili kuhakikisha tu kwamba yale wanayoyataka yanatimia kwa sababu watu watakapoanza kufanya matendo kama hayo jamii itapoteza uelekeo hakutokuwa na uwezo mkubwa utendaji wa kazi wala usimamizi mambo mengi hayatakwenda vizuri so mwisho wa siku dunia itapoteza uelekeo kama watu wapo kwa mfano wanaohisi wanajisikia kufanya mapenzi ya jinsia moja kwa sababu labda wao kimaumbile hormone zao zimekwenda kinyume kwa nini madaktari wasitengeneze dawa ambazo zitawasaidia kurudi kuwa sawa sasa imekuwa ni loophole ya kila mtu kuwa promoted kufanya anachojisikia hata kama kiko kinyume bila kujali madhara yake kwa jamii as long as ni mtu mmoja anafanya kumbe basi ni harari ya kila mtu kufanya mwisho wa siku ambaye hana shida ya homoni hana nini anaamua kwenda tu kinyume afanye vitu hivyo hivyo haiwezekani kuwa na dunia ambayo kila mtu atafanya anachojisikia haiwezi kuwa dunia yenye maana na wala na ushawishi haya mambo na kuyapigia kile unajiuliza hawa watu wanawaza nini hawa watu wanafikiria nini hebu tujaribu kukaa chini na kufikiria tena hasa kwa viongozi wa dini wasimame sana kutetea hili vinginevyo dunia inaharibika wa viongozi wengi walioko kwenye mamlaka mengi wanashindwa kufanya maamuzi kwa sababu ya pressure kubwa kutoka mataifa mbalimbali lakini viongozi walioko makanisani ni rahisi sana kusimamia maadili na kuwaonya watu wao na hata serikali inaweza ikapata nguvu pia kulisimamia hilo. Kwa hiyo swala moja la msingi sana kuweza kuwa na maendeleo endelevu basi ni kuwa na maadili misingi mikuu ya maadili katika jamii yoyote ile. Swala lingine ambalo ni la msingi sana ili kuweza kuwa na malengo na maendeleo endelevu tunahitaji sana kwa namna yoyote kuweza kuwahimiza, kuwasaidia na kuwawezesha vijana na wanawake katika jamii yote ile kwa sababu hauwezi kudiri na watu wachache kwa faida ya watu wengi lakini walio wengi katika jamii zetu hasa za Kiafrika wengi ni wanawake na vijana ukiwawezesha hawa kiuchumi ukiwawezesha hawa wakaweza kujisimamia na kusimama wao kama wao kwa namna yoyote ile ni rahisi sana na utaona tukao umewezesha kundi kubwa katika jamii umetuwezesha kiuchumi umetuwezesha kimaendeleo ki, ki na mwisho siku maendeleo endelevu yatakuepo kwa sababu kwa mfano kama unamwezesha kijana ina maana katika umri wake wa ujana mpaka anakuwa ni mtu ambaye atakuwa tayari ameweza kujisimamia kifedha atakuwa ameweza kujisimamia katika misingi mbalimbali hivyo atakuwa mtu mzima tayari ana uwezo wa kuweza kufanya maamuzi ana kazi nzuri ana nyumba nzuri kimsingi tayari utakuwa umewezesha maendeleo katika jamii lakini ukisema unaenda kusaidia uh, labda wanaume peke yao sio rahisi sana kwa wao kuweza kusaidia maendeleo katika jamii kwa sababu wao si wengi na wana shughuli nyingi lakini ukimwezesha mama kwa sababu yeye kwanza ndio mwangalizi wa familia yeye ndio mlezi yeye ndio msingi wa karibu kila kitu kinachofanyika 
yeye atahakikisha watoto wamekula vizuri, wamelala vizuri, wanasoma. Tayari tulikuwa tuna uhakika wa good education, quality education, tutakuwa na uhakika wa good health and well-being kwa sababu tayari kutakuwa kuna kuna mlo kamili katika familia, uh, kutakuwa kuna maladhi mazuri katika familia. Kwa kumwezesha mama na kijana ni kuiwezesha jamii kwa miaka mingi na sio tu kwa miaka mingi lakini pia katika misingi ambayo basi kwa kweli inafanya mambo mengi yaweze kwenda salama. Kwa hiyo ni muhimu sana katika jamii yote ile kumwezesha kwanza mwanamke na kijana kwa sababu wao ndio wanashika sehemu kubwa sana ya jamii. Na kuwezesha wao ni kuhakikisha maendeleo endelevu. Kwa nini tunasisitiza sana? Taifa lote lile duniani haliwezi kuwa na maendeleo endelevu kama watu wake mmoja mmoja hawana maendeleo endelevu. Ili taifa liwe huru lazima wananchi wake wawe na uhuru na huo unawekwa katika misingi mizuri ya kiuchumi. So ukiwaimarisha mwananchi mmoja mmoja wakawa na uwezo mzuri wa kifedha, uh, uwezo mzuri wa kiuchumi kwa namna yoyote ile taifa litakuwa na uwezo mzuri wa kiuchumi kwa sababu kama mtu mmoja mmoja yuko vizuri kiuchumi hivyo ni rahisi sana hata kwa wananchi wengine kusimama na kujitetea na mwisho wa siku taifa linaweza likasimama na kujitetea kwa hiyo hakuna taifa linaloweza kujitetea duniani kama wananchi wake hawezi kujitetea kwa sababu wao ndio sehemu msingi ya kile taifa kwa ni vizuri sana kuwezesha taifa uh, kwanza tukianza na wanawake pamoja na vijana tukiendelea pia kuheshimu haki za watoto hasa katika kusoma ukuaji kuishi kuachana na mambo ya utoaji mimba kwa sababu moja ya vitu pia vinawaathiri sana jamii ni baadhi ya mambo kama hayo kwa ni vizuri sana kuzingatia misingi ambayo ni thabiti ya maendeleo maisha ya mwanadamu yanahitaji makazi yaliyo salama, yaliyo bora, afya iliyo bora. Pasipokuwa na siha njema basi uwezi kuwa na misingi yoyote ya maendeleo. Inafaa nini kuwa na gari ambalo mwisho wa siku linakubeba tu kupeleka hospitali? Lakini kama una afya njema utaweza kuwa na uzalishaji mzuri, utaweza kusimamia shughuli zako vizuri utaweza kuendesha mambo mengine pia kwa ajili ya faida ya kizazi kilichopo na hata kitakachofuata. Kwa hiyo ni muhimu sana jamii zetu, serikali, viongozi na hata watunga sera na sheria kuzingatia sana swala hili kwa sababu ni msingi mkubwa wa maendeleo. Sala lingine ambayo ni la msingi sana katika shughuli za maendeleo ni kuhakikisha unakuwa na siasa zilizo safi, siasa na vyama vya siasa ambavyo havi tekelezi mambo yake katika mfumo wa ugawaji katika mfumo wa wachuki katika mfumo wa unyanyasaji kwa mfano katika nchi nyingi zinazoendelea unakuta chama cha siasa hasa kinachoongoza au kichoko madarakani kitaweza kuamua tu kutosikiliza au kutokubaliana na maamuzi fulani au na hoja fulani ambazo basi mtu fulani kazitoa au chama fulani kimezitoa kwa sababu tu ya utofauti wa, wa kuwa katika chama hiki na kile hata kama wazo linalotolewa ni la msingi kwa ajili ya maendeleo basi mwingine hawezi kuliunga mkono sasa hamwezi kuwa na taifa ambalo linahitaji maendeleo na wakati mkipinga sera ambazo ni za msingi kwa ajili ya maendeleo kwa sababu tu ya utofauti wa, wa, wa ule mtazamo wa kisiasa pia ni muhimu sana kuzingatia siasa hasa katika nchi zetu zinazoendelea inakuwa ya vyama tu wala viwili kwa sababu unakuta vyama viko ishirini huo mgawanyiko wa watu katika vyama ishirini kila mtu ana sera yake kila mtu ana wazo lake kila mtu ana ideology yake huu hao watu watafata lipi waache lipi na kwa nini mgawanyiko kama wote mahitaji maendeleo kwa nini wote kila mtu ana njia yake fikiri kimsingi lazima sana watu waweze kuelewa kwamba tunahitaji kuwa na sera, tunahitaji kuwa na katiba, tunahitaji kuwa na mfumo wa kisheria ambao kila mtu, kila chama kitatueleza tu kwamba sera ile ile yenyewe itakitekeleza itaitekeleza kwa namna ipi. Sera ile ile chama chenyewe kitaitekeleza kwa ufanisi 
kwa kutumia mbinu gani na sio kila mtu anakuja na sera yake kila mtu anakuja na kanuni yake kwa taifa kama taifa ni muhimu sana kuwa na sera ambayo ni moja kuwa na sera ambayo kabisa basi kila mtu ataielewa na utofauti utakuja tu basi katika utekelezaji wake kwamba huyu atasema nitaitekeleza hivi au atasema nitaitekeleza vile na mwisho wa siku watu waamue kwamba nini kifanyike na nani aweze kukifanya kwa sababu zipi na sio kila mtu aseme la kwake mgawanyiko huo kimsingi hauwezi kuwa mzuri na hauwezi kusaidia kuaji wa taifa kwa siasa safi siasa zisizojaribu mgawanyiko siasa ambazo kiongozi alioko madarakani anakuwa na ugomvi na watu ambao wanafanya shughuli kupitia sekta binafsi kwa sababu sekta binafsi kwa mfano labda zizoko chini ya ya mashirika fulani au wasasi za kidini au watu tu binafsi zinaweza zikawa zina, sio zinaweza zinafanya kwa ajili ya kusaidia kutoa huduma kwa jamii kitu ambacho kutoa huduma basi ni jukumu la serikali kwa kama serikali hiyo ni jukumu lake inapojitokeza wengine kwa ajili ya kusaidia hakuna haja ya hawa watu wawili kuanza kuvutana kwa sababu kumeshuhudiwa kwenye baadhi ya sehemu baadhi ya nchi baadhi ya mataifa kumekuwa na migogoro mikubwa sana pengine hizo ikawa ni ya chini kwa chini lakini basi unaona kabisa kwamba kuna baadhi ya watu kutoka serikalini au kutoka katika nyazifa fulani hawana mahusiano mazuri na sekta binafsi na sababu ya msingi tu ni kwamba hawa ni private hawa ni watu wa sekta binafsi na sisi ni serikali wanatiji kuoneshana nani ambaye yeye ana nguvu kuliko mwingine nani ana mamlaka kuliko mwingine nani anaweza kufanya hicho kuliko mwingine kumbe basi mwisho wa siku inakuwa ni mashindano na madhara yake anayeweza kuja kuumia ni mwananchi wa chini mwananchi maskini. Hivyo inaonekana kabisa kuwa kuna haja kubwa sana na haja ya msingi ya huduma za jamii kutolewa uh, misingi ya maendeleo kuwepo na kuwekwa pasipo kutazama utofauti wa kisiasa, utofauti wa mtazamo, utofauti wa utendaji kwa sababu kama taifa ni moja maendeleo yanahitaji kila mmoja ili kuendelea mbele. Basi pia tungeweza kujaribu kuangalia kwamba ili maendeleo yaweze kuwepo katika taifa lolote lile ile 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 misingi ambayo inawekwa lazima sana izingatie maamuzi yanayofanyika katika jamii yafanyika katika njia ya ushirikishwaji ushirikishwaji wa kila mmoja ushirikishwaji wa mwananchi pengine si rahisi na haiwezekani kumshirikisha kila mmoja lakini basi kuwe na mfumo ambao utazingatia na kujari walau wazo au mawazo ya walio wengi mawazo ya taifa hilo mawazo ya tamaduni huo na sio watu wachache labda wenye nguvu kutoka taifa fulani kwa sababu wanawapa msaada wao ndio wao na maamuzi makubwa juu ya hilo. Hapa maendeleo yatakayokuepo hapa hayawezi kuwa ya kudumu kwa sababu hawa hayawezi kuwa endelevu kwa sababu yale au wale walio wanaoyatekeleza wanayatekeleza kwa sababu ambazo ni binafsi. Na mwisho wa siku utaona kile wanachokifanya hakiingii katika mioyo ya watu kinakufa mapema. Hata kama ilikuwa ni project ilikuwa ni mradi wa fedha nyingi basi utaishia kuharibika. Kwa maendeleo yote yale yanahitaji kimsingi sana mipango ambayo ni endelevu na ikiwepo pia ushirikishwaji wa kila mtu. Kwa hiyo ni muhimu sana kwa serikali, kwa mamlaka na wadau mbalimbali wa maendeleo kupanga mambo yao ya na shughuli za kimaendeleo kwa kuhakikisha inawaweka watu pamoja katika misingi ya umoja, misingi ya ya kuhakikisha amani, misingi ya kuhakikisha kweli maendeleo yanakuwa endelevu. Vinginevyo maendeleo basi yatakuepo lakini si endelevu basi msingi mwingine ambao ni mkuu sana basi ni katika kila ambacho mwanadamu anakifanya ili kiweze kufanikiwa unahitaji sana kukifanya kitu kutoka ndani ya moyo wako unahitaji kufanya kazi kwa bidii siri kubwa na siri ya pekee ya mafanikio ya mwanadamu yote katika dunia hii basi ni kufanya kazi kwa moyo na kufanya kazi kwa bidii kwa sababu kama unachokifanya hakitoki wala hakina uhusiano kati ya moyo wako na akili yako kile unachokifanya sana kitengana na, na, na maneno katika mdomo wako lakini basi kama moyo wako kweli nao unahusika katika kuyafikiri na kuyatenda yale yanayoendelea 
hicho kitadumu hicho kitakuwa endelevu kwa kuna haja kubwa sana na ya msingi mwanadamu anapaswa kufanya kazi kwa bidii kubwa na hii hasa kwa vijana kwa sababu vijana wakiweza kutengeneza misingi ya kufanya kazi kwa bidii vijana wakiweza kuwa na utamaduni wa kuthamini wajibu wao kujituma kufanya kazi kwa moyo ina daima inasema kwa kitu ambacho mwanadamu atakifanya kutoka ndani ya moyo wake daima kina nguvu kuliko kile anachokifanya kutoka nje ya moyo wake kwa hiyo moyo wa mwanadamu lazima uonekane katika kile anachokifanya moyo wa mwanadamu na akili yake lazima vionekane au vihusiane na tendo lile analolifanya vinginevyo hakutakuwa na uhalisia wa ambao itapoteza ile maana ya kile kitu na mwisho wa siku akiwezi kudumu vijana kwa mfano we unasoma au labda unafanya kazi tayari kuna malengo yote ya msingi ambayo okay labda mimi ni mwanafunzi nitakapomaliza shule nitaenda nikafanye kazi wapi tafanya nini unakaa hapa kuna maliza shule ndio unaanza kutafuta kazi lakini ulikuwa na mwaka mzima miaka mitatu ulipoanza tu chuo ulijua nitamaliza Unajua kabisa nataka kumaliza nahitaji kazi. Mbona usianze kutafuta kazi mapema hata kabla ya wewe kumaliza? Kwa unaona kabisa kuna hali fulani ya uzembe. Vitu ambavyo ni vya msingi sana ni hivyo. Zingatia mimi kama mwanafunzi, mimi kama kijana, mimi kama mfanyakazi. Nafanya kazi lakini najua siwezi kuwa na hii kazi milele. Siwezi kuwa na hii kazi maisha yangu yote. Najipangaje kuwa na misingi mizuri ya maendeleo baadaye? Si tu kwangu kwa hata kizazi kinachokuja kwa mfano je unajituma kwa ajili ya kupata fedha na kufanya saving au kila unachokipata unakitumia unaspend na kinaisha unaona wakati mwingine mtu ni bora anunue vitu vingi ambavyo tayari anavyo lakini kuliko kubakia na fedha kiasi kwenye account yake sasa unasema huyu mtu atakuwa lini kwa sababu unajua mtu anaendelea kwa kuweka na anafilisika kwa kutumia so ni bora uendelee kuweka kidogo kidogo itakusaidia kuwa na kingi baadaye kuliko kuendelea kutumia kila siku hata kama ni kidogo kidogo mwisho siku kitaisha kwa ni swala la msingi sana kuzingatia kwamba katika kila unachokifanya kuna kitu fulani kinabaki kwa ajili ya kesho. Hili ni swala muhimu sana. Lakini kitu kingine ambacho nimesema ni hicho kwa mfano vijana walio bado wanasoma, vijana walio bado wanajiandaa na maisha ni vizuri sana kujipanga kwa sababu maisha yetu sisi wanadamu ni kama project. Ina mwanzo, ina mwisho. Lazima uwe na malengo kwamba mimi katika maisha yangu yote nitakuwa na malengo yangu saba lengo la kwanza ni kuhakikisha nimesoma vizuri nimekuwa na maisha yangu mazuri nimekuwa na nyumba na usafiri na kazi yangu na mimi niweke saving hata ndakapozeeka ni na kitu fulani lengo la pili ni kuhakikisha na mimi naacha urithi kwa ajili ya familia yangu lengo la tatu ni kuhakikisha katika umri wangu ujana nimesaidia hawa na hawa na mimi nimeinua watu hawa hivyo usipokuwa na malengo ni kama project nayo kwenda bila mwelekeo project nayo kwenda bila dira project nayo kwenda bila hata kuzingatia kwamba itakuepo mpaka lini itaisha lini lazima kujipanga ukijipanga siku zote maisha yanakuwa ni salama vinginevyo utaishia kulalamika utaishia kupata shida uzuni na uchungu kumbe ni ile kwamba haukuwa na malengo ambayo yangeweza kusaidia fika sema ambayo ni salama. Kwa hiyo ushauri wangu kwa viongozi wetu, kwa vijana wenzangu, kwa taifa na hata kwa dunia ni kwamba tuna haja kubwa sana ya kutazama mifumo yetu ya utendaji, mifumo yetu ya ya, ya, ya usimamizi wa mambo tunayoyafanya, lakini pia mifumo yetu ya uongozi. Je, hii mifumo inasaidia kuimarisha au kuweka katika jamii zetu 
misingi ya maendeleo endelevu au ni kwamba tu tunafanya kwa sababu ya sifa binafsi tunafanya kwa sababu ya kutekeleza mambo fulani tunahitaji sana kuhakikisha serikali ambazo zinaunganisha watu kuwa wamoja tunahitaji sana kuwa na serikali na viongozi na jamii kuanzia ngazi ya familia ambayo inawaleta watu wote pamoja changamoto katika maisha ni za kawaida amwezi wote siku zote watu mkaelewana lakini changamoto zisiwe chanzo cha watu kuwa maadui changamoto zisiwe chanzo cha watu kusukia kwa sababu maisha siku zote hayawezi kuwa siku ya siku kuu mara nyingi katika maisha yetu siku ambazo inaweza kufurahi sana huwa ni chache lakini iwe basi tunafanya kwa ajili ya kuhakikisha tunakuwa na misingi iliyo bora ya maendeleo daima ili mtu aweze kusimama yeye mwenyewe anahitaji nguvu zake yeye mwenyewe lakini kama siku zote atakuwa na shikwa mkono hawezi kudumu katika misingi iliyo binafsi na misingi iliyo ya kudumu kwa sababu aliyemshika mkono akidondoka au akiondoka basi yeye hawezi kudumu vivyo hivyo hata kwa taifa vivyo hivyo hata kwa dunia ili dunia iweze kuwa salama lazima tuhakikishe tuna misingi iliyo salama misingi iliyo ya haki na kila mmoja wetu anaweza kuwa salama basi tunapokaribia kumaliza mwaka huu wa 2018 kwenda mwaka 2019 ni vizuri kila mmoja wetu yeye kama yeye ajitazame yeye kama yeye ajiulize na ajifikirie je kila anachokifanya kinamsaidia kuwa na maendeleo endelevu kila anachokifanya kinasaidia nini ta, familia yake kinasaidia vipi taifa lake kinasaidia vipi dunia nzima katika kufikia malengo endelevu ya umoja wa mataifa na dunia nzima lakini pia hata umoja wa mataifa nao wajifikirie programu wanazozifanya katika mataifa mbalimbali mbali. zipo kwa ajili ya kuwafaidisha baadhi ya watu na kuendeleza propaganda katika ulimwengu au zipo kweli kwa ajili ya kuweka misingi ya maendeleo endelevu au zipo kwa sababu zipi na vinginevyo wakiona kama kuna changamoto sehemu basi wakai chini wajifikirie na waone nini wanaweza kukifanya kuhakikisha mwaka 2019 mwaka 2020 anakuwa ni wakati wa mabadiliko ambayo ni makubwa kwa ajili ya maendeleo endelevu katika ulimwengu huu ninawashukuru sana ninawatakia siku njema asante We hope you enjoyed the program and will join us back for another show on WCAT Radio. This is Sebastian Mafud. Good day.